Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some player props I like on prize picks uh, for the NBA slate on Tuesday, November the 15th. Now we do just have five games tonight, so it's kind of a, a shorter slate, but I still have three picks that I want to share with you guys uh, in today's video. Recording this video around 1230 Eastern time on Tuesday. Um, not, you know, we're still waiting on some prop to be added. Prize picks a little bit slower to get their props up right now. Um, still no fantasy score projections up and, and fantasy score is like, that's the category that I like to look at a lot. Um, so there's no fantasy score props up right now, but I did still find three picks I wanted to share with you guys. We got a points, rebounds, and assist prop for today, a points, rebounds prop, and then a points and assist prop. So we're, you know, going into some different categories that I usually don't dabble into, but found some lines that I did like, some matchups I liked. Uh, so we'll talk through these three plays. Before we do, guys, hit that like button down below if you do enjoy these prize picks videos. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you're new to prize picks, uh, check the bottom of the screen. You can sign up with promo code NOAH. When you do sign up with my promo code, prize picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Also, I do want to recap our plays from yesterday, from Monday. And man, Monday, God, it was a, it was a day to forget because Monday all around was terrible. Uh, we gave out two picks on YouTube, went or went 0-1 on our two picks. One of our picks pushed. We took Bojan Bogdanovic to have more than uh, 26 and a half fancy points, and he finished with exactly 26 and a half fancy points. So that pick was basically, you know, a push. It did, pretty much didn't count. I um, mean, crazy because Bojan had five turnovers. He lost five points from turnovers, and I don't know why. It's, but it seems like any time I bet a player's fancy score, they just have like an, an insane amount of turnovers, and obviously those are costly because you lose one point for each one of those. Um, so that was annoying to see Bojan have five turnovers and, you know, push his line. Felt like he should have gone over. Uh, but then we took Jason Tatum over assist. Felt really good about that play. That, that prop was heavily juiced on all the sports books. It was like, it was minus 155 on DK. And I think his line actually got bumped up to five. And Tatum, man, he did everything except get assists yesterday. He had like 30 something points. He had like 10 rebounds. He had, I think, three steals, three blocks, but just one assist. Crazy, man. Crazy. Um, Felt really good about that one, but you know, unfortunate. Tatum only had one assist yesterday. Didn't catch any of our two, didn't catch our two pick entry on YouTube, and then I gave out four picks on Patreon. Legit went 0 and 4 on our Patreon plays. I mean, it was just a terrible day yesterday. Um, but hopefully, we can bounce back today. Smaller slate, so I don't want to go too crazy today. But I do have three picks to give you guys in this video. So let's start off in the PRA category: points, rebounds, and assists. I want to talk about John Morant today. So John Morant, 42 and a half PRA. I like John Morant to go over this line, and if you do look over his last five games, he's only gone over this in two out of their last five games, but you know, there was one game where he lost by the hook, he finished with 42, there was another game against Washington, he came up just short. What makes me really like this prop, though, is that Desmond Bain is doubtful, so Desmond Bain's not expected to play. I think we actually got word um, before I start recording, Desmond Bain's going to be out for like the, the next two to three weeks, so no Desmond Bain for the Grizzlies tonight, and without Desmond Bain... John Morant sees a really big bump. So overall this season, John Morant's had a massive role. He's had a really high usage rate, really high assist percentage. He's been rebounding pretty well too. On the season, 36.3% usage rate for John Morant, 37.3% assist percentage, uh, a 10 or 9.7% total rebound percentage. Per 36, he's averaging about 31.5 points, 7.5 assists, and 6.5 rebounds per 36. And those numbers are not you know, counting Desmond Bain off the floor. Now, when you take Desmond Bain off the floor, 40.3% usage rate for John Morant. So he's got over a 40% usage rate without Desmond Bain on the floor this season. 43.8% assist percentage. His total rebound percentage goes up to 11.2%. And then per 36, without Desmond Bain, 37 points, uh, 7.5 assists, and 7.3 rebounds. So I know you know you don't want to look at per 36 stats too much because obviously you know Morant's going to play. There's going to be times when he's playing with some other high usage guys like Jaron Jackson Jr. is expected to play tonight, so he's going to be playing with Triple J again. Triple J is a guy that can you know soak up a lot of usage, but I do expect Triple J to be on a minutes limit. It's his first game back from from foot surgery, um, but per 36 this season without Desmond Bain, 37, seven and a half, and seven. So basically like. 52 PRA for John Morant, and do I expect, you know, should John Morant's projection be 52? Obviously not, but I think we can expect him to take on a really big role without Desmond Bain. He's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. His usage rate's going to be sky high. It's kind of a tougher matchup against the Pelicans. You know, the Pelicans do have some really good wing defenders. Herb Jones is a really good defender. Najee Marshall can defend pretty well, but John Morant's just going to have the ball in his hands so much. The offense is going to run through him. He's been a guy that has been able to produce even in tough matchups. 
And even though this might be kind of a tougher matchup, this game still has a really high total, 229 total right now, three and a half point spread. So it's expected to be a you know fairly high scoring game, expected to be a close game as well. And I just think without Desmond Bain, John Morant's going to have a massive role. He's going to have to do everything. He's been rebounding well lately. He's been racking up assists. I think there's a lot of ways he could go over 42 and a half PRA, whether it's from a big scoring game, maybe he gets close to a triple double. I mean, there's been a couple games lately where he's nearly had a triple double. Um, last game, he had 28, 10, and 8. Against Boston, he had 38 and 9. He's been doing everything lately for the, for the Grizzlies. And again, without Bain, I think we can expect an even bigger role for John Morant. So that's the first play that I like for today. 42 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Going to be taking John Morant to go over that line. And then the other two props I like, we got a points and rebounds prop, and then we have a points and assist prop. So we'll start off in, with points and assists. Paul George, 27 and a half points plus assists. I like Paul George to go over this line. I um, mean, if you look at his props on Price Picks right now, his points prop is set at 24 and a half. His assist prop is set at four and a half. You add those two up together, that's 29. So we're automatically getting a little bit of value here, taking points plus assist instead of taking you know points. I think if if you're gonna bet his over four or bet his over 24 and a half points, you might as well just bet points plus assist because Paul George is most likely gonna get at least three to four assists, if not more than that. Again, his assist projection for today is four and a half. But on the season, Paul George does lead the Clippers in usage rate, and he leads the Clippers in potential assists as well. 30.9% usage rate for PG this season, and he's averaging 8.8 .8 potential assists per game. Uh, now, John Wall did not play yesterday. is the second half of a back-to-back -back for the Clippers tonight, so I'm expecting John Wall to play tonight. With John Wall back, you know we might not see Paul George have the ball in his hands as much, but he's still going to lead the team in usage. He's still going to be able to get some assists as well. Over his last three games against the Mavs, and you know, this this is another kind of tougher matchup. The Mavs do have some really good wing defenders. Dorian Finney-Smith is a really good defender. Uh, Reggie Bullock's a good defender, but Reggie Bullock, we, we did just get word, is questionable, so he might not play tonight. But over his last three games against the Mavs, 26 points and 6 assists for Paul George, 29 points and 6 assists, 28 points and 5 assists. So he's gone over this line in three straight games against Dallas. Obviously, without Kawhi Leonard, we can continue to expect a big role for Paul George, a really big usage rate. We can you know, continue to expect him to pretty much lead this offense. I want to say his shot volume has been pretty, pretty good lately, um, even though he kind of has had some down scoring games. Like He's still been shooting the ball a lot. Last night against Houston, didn't even play in the fourth quarter, and he still scored 22 points with five assists. He shot seven for 18 in that game. I mean, 18, 21, 17, 20, 22. He's basically had 20 plus field goal attempts in almost every game this season. He's been really aggressive on the offensive end. The assist numbers have not been as high this year. Like he's only averaging four and a half assists per game, but he still leads the team in potential assists. So I think there could be some games where he does get like six, seven assists. Hopefully tonight is one of those games. Um, but 27 and a half points plus assists. I do like this line for Paul George. I think it makes more sense to play this versus playing his points prop or playing his assist prop. I mean, if you wanted to play his assist prop, you could. But for the points prop, I would just bet, you know, that's it. Points plus assists. Because if Paul George gets 25 points tonight, very good chance he's getting at least three assists. So it just makes more sense to play points plus assists. And I think uh, right now on DK Sportsbook, this line is at 27 and a half, but it is favoring the over. Uh, 27 and a half is the points plus assist line for Paul George, but it is minus 125 on the over. So slightly juiced on the over there. Um, I like this line though for PG. I think this line could probably be 28 and a half, if not 29, maybe you know 29 and a half. I mean, right now, Price Picks has him projected for 24 and a half points and four and a half assists. You add those two up together, that's 29, obviously. So I like this as our second play for today, Paul George to have more than 27 and a half points plus assist. And then our third and final prop is going to be points, a points plus rebounds prop. I want to talk about Julius Randle. His points plus rebound prop is currently set at 28 and a half. And I also like the over here. Uh, worth noting that DraftKings Sportsbook, they actually have this line at 29 and a half. So we're getting a little bit of value with it being at, you know, 28 and a half on prize picks, whereas on most books, it's 29 and a half. But if you look at Julius Randle and like what he's been doing lately, so for one thing, he's gone over this line now in five straight games. Um, he's hitting five straight on the season. He's hitting seven out of 13 games, but he's been rebounding really well lately. And he's also been scoring a ton over his last five games, 29, 31, 24, 21, and 25 points. And then rebounds, 10, 8, 11, 8, and 9 rebounds. He's got double digit rebounds in three or three out of his last six games. He has at least 10 boards. He has at least eight boards in six straight games. So the rebounds have been there. I think the scoring should continue to be there. I mean, on the season, he's been averaging about 30 points plus rebounds on the season. So I think, you know, this line could definitely be a little bit higher. I think it probably should be 29 and a half, given that all the other books have it 
at 29 and a half. Price picks might bump this at some point today. I don't know. Uh, but I'll, I'll take it to 28 and a half, get a little bit of a discount. You know, we're trying to find any little edges that we can. So 28 and a half points plus rebounds for Julius Randle. On the season, he's been averaging about 21 points and nine rebounds per game. So again, about 30 points plus rebounds. He's gone over this line in five straight. And when you look at this matchup versus Utah, I think this is a pretty good spot for Julius Randle. So far this season, and this is something that I've talked about in my previous videos, so far this season, the team giving up the most points in the paint this season is the Utah Jazz. And, and Julius Randle's, you know, he's an elusive big. He's a guy that can stretch the floor. He can shoot threes. He's got a mid-range jumper, but he can also body you up in the paint. He's a guy that can get a lot of a lot of putbacks, a lot of you know baskets or a lot of you know made baskets around the rim. And that's where the, the Jazz really struggle. They've been giving up a ton of points in the paint this year. So I think it sets up as a pretty good scoring game for Julius Randle. I think the rebounds should continue to be there on the season. He's second on the team in rebound chances per game, 15.1 rebound chances per game. He leads the team in usage rate. He's got a 25.3% usage rate, which is the you know highest among all the all the regular rotation guys. Leads, you know, has a higher usage rate than RJ Barrett, Derrick Rose, Jalen Brunson. And you know, I, I thought with Jalen Brunson on the Knicks this year. Maybe we might see Randall's usage drop a little bit, but he's still been you know, pretty aggressive offensively. His usage rate's still been really solid. And I want to take a look at his like shot volume as well, because I, I want to say he's still been taking a lot of shots, and he's obviously been scoring a ton lately. 20-plus points in five straight games, 19, 16, 15, 18, and 14 field goal attempts. He's been shooting a lot of threes, too. Six, seven, eight, three, or 13 and seven threes. There was one game he took 13 threes against Minnesota. So, you know, getting a guy like this that can score in multiple ways, whether it be from threes, from you know, mid-range jumpers in the paint, which is where Utah really struggles. Getting a guy like this that can score in a variety of ways, I think is always nice. Um, plus, you know, rebounding wise, the rebound should be there. He's had eight rebounds in like six straight games. 28 or 28 and a half points plus rebounds for Julius Randle. I do like the over here. And that will be our third and final pick for today. So we got some different props today. I, I usually don't do like the, the points plus rebounds and the points plus assists, but Got some lines I did like for today. So John Morant to have more than 42 and a half uh, points, rebounds, and assists will be our first pick for today. Paul George to have more than 27 and a half points plus assists, and then we'll take uh, Julius Randle to have more than 28 and a half points plus rebounds. You guys can choose how you want to play these three picks. I usually, what I personally do, I play them all in one entry, and I usually do a power play. But that's just how I like to play. You guys need to choose how you want to play. You know, if you do a flex play. If you get a pick wrong, you still make some money. So that's always the safer route to go. If you do a power play, it's kind of like a you know a parlay. You have to hit every pick. But if you do get all three picks right, you get 5x your money. But on the flex play, even if you get a pick wrong, you still get 1.25x. So you still make a little bit of money. And if you get all three picks right, you still you know double your money doing the flex play. So flex play is usually the safer route to go. You can also you know, mix and match. You can make mul multiple two-pick entries. So you could do a, a two-pick entry with Ja and PG. You could do a two-pick entry with Ja and Randall. You could do a two-pick entry with PG and Randall. Uh, you can make like three different two-pick entries. There's plenty of ways you could you know, spread out these three picks. You choose how you want to play them though. Hopefully we can bounce back today, hit all three of these picks guys. But as always, if you guys do enjoy these prospects videos, please hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, check out Prize Picks, sign up for Prize Picks, and use promo code NOAA. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Um, if you guys want more, more Prize Picks plays from me, if you do enjoy these YouTube videos, if they help you out a lot and you want more Prize Picks plays from me, I provide those over on Patreon. You can check out the Patreon link down below in the description. You can see all that I do offer over there. But best of luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate your support as always. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.